Our speaker today, thank goodness, is because of Susan Lane and Michael Langenstein, who have kindly pushed and shoved and, and encouraged us to get in touch with Aaron Cohen. And we did this months ago, it seemed like. And, you know, we looked at the schedule and said, oh, well, we'd like to schedule you for January 2024. And he probably thought it would never happen. But little by little, these months uh, slipped by. And here it was showtime for Aaron. He's here today from New York State, not in the city itself, but in a, another community a university community in the area, a couple of hours. But uh, Aaron has a wonderful background in, in uh, landscape architecture, and he has uh, lived and uh, uh, been a part of Japanese culture, I think he said, like for 30-some years he lived there. I could be wrong about that. He can correct me, but... We're delighted to have somebody that's fluent in the language and can read and write Japanese, which I think is just remarkable and amazing, truly. But he is the man to uh, uh, learn from and to uh, enjoy. And uh, I think you're going to uh, do both of those uh, things with Aaron Cohen this afternoon. And so without further ado, I'll turn it over to him to please begin your presentation. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you very much. Well, that's, that little illustration is, is me uh, with pencil and paper and writing a memo to send to the club. Characteristics of Japanese picture postcards. My, my approach for today is it's not academic, it, it's not commercial, it's not scholarly. What I've done is to organize some observations and many snapshots of postcards, thinking that the result will be of interest to the Wichita Club members since they're used to looking at many cards in a short period of time. To summarize the major postcard characteristics, I would say that we're concerned with are these, the use of national symbols like Mount Fuji, the rising sun flag, and especially the emperor, uh, the use of pre-modern history, uh, including samurais and sword play and myth mythological stories. The use of Japanese artistic sensibility, techniques and themes, and postcards as used by the government in order to promote rather special interests that they had at one time in their history, imperialism, militarism, and propaganda. The framework to keep in mind is the way the Japanese people define their historical periods, that is, by the years of reign of an emperor. So we have Meiji, Taisho, Showa, Heisei, and the present emperor, whose name is Reiwa. Feudalism was ended in 1868 with the restoration of the emperor as the de facto ruler of the nation. That would be Emperor Meiji. The old era name was scrapped and the new one named Meiji, which also became his name. He was succeeded by Taisho, his son, Showa, his grandson, and, and so on. But we're only concerned with Meiji, Taisho, and Showa emperors. The Japanese think in, ter in terms of these historical periods and often disregard continuity, but actually the influence of Meiji carried over into the early Taisho period. Taisho period designs in the later years carried over to the Showa period. So there's some gradual change over time rather than an overnight change from one emperor to the next. And this is also evident with regard to the postcards. So we should think of Meiji style that we can also see in, in cards from later years. The most important point might be the influence of the war against Russia in 1904, 1905, 
in the Meiji period, what took place? The Japanese were able to reform trade treaties that gave them control of their own tariffs. Industrialization proceeded. Emigration began in the late 19th century. There was a great effort to establish the Emperor Meiji as a father figure for the nation. Success against the Russians gave encouragement to militaristic interests. And there was a big picture, picture, part, sorry, picture postcard boom coinciding with the war. Here's Emperor Meiji. The end of feudalism pre presented many challenges, including assurance of sovereignty and unification. To unify the nation, the role of the emperor was of crucial importance. Conditions were manipulated to establish Meiji as a living god or a kind of national father figure. On the right, he's shown here in the center, his, his son immediately below him, various aristocrats and oligarchs from the Meiji period, all together in a montage photo produced as a postcard. A kind of quasi-direct linkage of even ordinary people to the emperor was formed. Later, when war came, this link linkage was the reason why so many soldiers felt hesitation, felt no hesitation in giving their lives to protect the interests of the emperor. Public appearances of the emperor, such as his observation of military review or war games in, in Japan, invariably became a reason to issue ornate picture postcards showing the emperor and related items. We'll see some of them very soon. Imperial family marriage or an enthronement also became an important reason for postcards to be issued. Postcards made by private parties appeared in 1900. In 1904, they became well established. And at that time, there was a great surge in their popularity and production and use of New Year's greeting cards. So here we have an embossed, highly decorative postcards showing the emperor and two naval commanders or admirals against a, back, a background of both the rising sun and an anchor. So we know that this is to give a little bit of exposure to men from the Imperial Navy. And this type of decorative, in, intricately designed, embossed card was also produced for the army, but also for business, industry, educational institutions, and, and the like. This type of card, I think, is one characteristic of, of the Japanese postcard in, in general. So he, here's, the, here's the emperor who visited some undetermined location in Japan. And on that occasion, a series of, car, a series of cards were issued of which one would be ornate like this with embossed, maybe additional printing of the gilt coloration on the imperial household symbol, the 16 petal chrysanthemum. You, you, you can see the art, artillery with the, the wheel treated as if it was one of the emperor's chrysanthemums on the, on the left and a similar card on the right. Both were issued on the occasion of some war games in Japan that were witnessed by the emperor. Take special note of the artistic treatment of the little stream on the left-hand card. That type of treatment is very Japanese. We'll see something similar to it in a little while. So here's the emperor again with Teddy Roosevelt, and you can see what's linking them in, in the center, that's the undersea cable between the west coast of America and, and, and Japan. This is, an, again, an embossed card, quite, quite fancy and relatively, relatively common. It was a, a, big, a big event at the time. Here we're getting closer to what I would 
called the Meiji spirit or Meiji style. Both New Year's cards, 19, from 1907 on the bottom and from an undetermined date, probably about 1907 or 1906 on the top. Uh, a, unusual but they have the japanese word for happy new year in roman letters and the text in the lower card is simply the, the year 1907 but what's what is important i think is the outline of, of the let of the words is kind of bold or fat and that kind of heavy line seems to be a characteristic of other po postcards from, from the Meiji period. There's ample space in both cards for the addition of, of a, a message by, by the sender. And this provision of the space for the message seems to be very common in, in Japan. Again, 1907 is a, a writing brush and a, a stand. This de this design is strictly Meiji period. It's impossible to imagine it being made in subsequent years. It's very very much a Meiji de design. Again, this space provided for for a message. The, the treatment of these women is very much Meiji in, in nature. Once the Taisho period began. The depiction of women changed from this to something a little bit different, a little bit more modern. I think the card on the right suggests to me a little bit of an art, art uh, nouveau feeling. These New Year's cards uh, also Meiji period. The, the bottom card doesn't look like it's from the Meiji period, but the, the same Thick, thick lines that we saw before, you can see here as well. Gentleman on the, on the top with the top hat, hat and, ta and, ta and tails is paying a New Year's visit to, to his, his friend on, on the right. The Meiji, Meiji, Meiji period design. Ample space for a message below the card on the left had been published as a bound in addition to a magazine for the owner of the magazine to cut out and, and, and use. Binding heavy stock printed postcards in magazines was one way that postcards became popular during the Meiji period. Here are two cards with similar design approaches both em em embossed, relatively expensive for, for the times. And take a note of the way clouds are depicted in the lower postcard because that is typically Jap Japanese as, as well. Here's an example of a ja of Japanese traditional culture that re requires a, a, some knowledge in order to un under be understand what's going on. These, of course, are New Year's cards. And the fig figures are itinerant comedians who would make the rounds of people's homes during the New Year, do a little song and dance. And Joe, Joe one of them would be a, a straight man for the, for the other. And it was strictly a, a, a New Year's phenomenon. Here's a Japanese gent gent gentleman with a, a cigar. Again, the bold outline treatment, flat planes of, of color, such as common in many Japanese woodblock prints. And this card as well, stri strictly Meiji in spirit. We wouldn't see it in subsequent years. The couple on the, on, on the right uh, make, making a, a weekend trip somewhere not too far from home. This, this card could easily have been made after the Meiji period. So it's Meiji and Meiji plus in terms of provenance. Card on 
on, on the right, strict, strictly Meiji in spirit. Part on the left, you can see the flowing S-shaped line in the in the background behind the the woman, strictly a, a, a Japanese design technique. And this also is a New Year's car, and she's holding something that's a little bit like a button with a, a little wing-like flower. And as a, a New Year's game, it, it would be batted but from one person to the to the next using a racket such as the one she's holding in her left left hand. Again, sky treatment with flowing lines going across the page. R rising sun for, for New Year's grains, also the tortoises and falcons are associated with New Year's cards, so it's a strict give giveaway. The right-hand card is Meiji in, in origin, but also is su suggesting Art Deco period com coming up soon after after this was made. It's a new, new year New Year's card, highly stylized treatment of natural materials. Two young women on the beach, a couple walk, walking a, 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 a lo, along. Th these two are Meiji in, in, in spirit. Even though the lower card looks as if it might come from a, a, a later period, the Japanese did not produce this kind of design very much after the, the Meiji period. Next. Masterful treatment of foreground, middle ground, and Distance, a very, a very well, well done card with Mount Fuji and these two young girls in the snow. 1912 was the year of the, year of the mouse down below. Unusual for Japan, they produced some cards with English wording. The gentleman in the upper card doesn't look Japanese at, at all. And yet, it was made for Japanese use. This type of card was commonly made for all types of postcard issuers. The card on the left was published by a warehouse company. So the building in the, in the photograph is a, a warehouse. You 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 can't easily imagine how a a warehouse operation is related to an, an angelic woman sitting on a crescent moon against a starry sky. The card on, on the right was issued by a bank. It must have been for the year of the rooster. You can, you can see the bird down on, on, the, on the left. The, the three red bars are probably a symbol or, or uh, for for the bank, this type of card with a a, a woman in classical dr dress was made for all kinds of organizations. On the right, of course, you, although it's blue, that arc su suggests that it, it's defining treatment of of the sun. I think what's interesting here is the use of the frames on both cards without the rectangular and oblong frames the design would have no no life at all but I think the use of the frames cr creates a three-dimensional feeling which is quite special Again, here we have a gentleman somehow with a, straw, a law, uh, top hat. I would certainly expect this to be a New Year's card with a humorous touch rather than showing some nat natural scene. I cannot, cannot, cannot make out what the writing on the other cards said. These cards also, I, I cannot imagine as having been produced 
anywhere at any time other than the Meiji period. I don't know how many Japanese households were like this with the husband doing the dishes, doing the cooking, taking care of the baby, making, making, some, making some food on, on the right-hand side while his wife enjoys playing the piano or smoking a cigarette. There weren't many, but the Japanese also made some cards showing henpecked husbands or humorous scenes. They weren't that common. They add something to the overall pic picture. The woman on the left is holding a uh, probably a bamboo splint cage for an, an insect for a, 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 a cricket. These, these designs as well, I cannot imagine being produced in later ye years. Here's a bat battleship, a, a New Year's card, good use of color. Again, horizontal lines for, for the sky. I grouped four cards which have a similar feeling. And these also are Meiji in spirit, at least according to my somewhat subjective view. Not too elaborate, interesting when lined up together like this. Again, good use of frames to organize the postcard. We, we know it's Meiji not only from the design, but in my view, the use of purple. And of course, the, the clothing worn by the young boys on, on the right. He's holding a kite because flying kites is one traditional activity for, 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 for New Year's. The, the flag also, of course, is, is a giveaway indicating that the card is for New Year's use. Here, here, here's a card that I would say shows some influence of Art Nouveau. It's not clear who these men were, uh, except the one on, with the beard is no, no longer alive. The, 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 the word below, below the photograph indicates that uh, he's pa passed away. And I think that's why the design is a little bit somber. So I, I would say this too is strictly Meiji period. S simple designs, great re restraint, I would I say, on the part of the artist. Here's a military theme up on the right, and the, the, the line, line work in, in the background that appears to be uh, the ocean is su suggestive of Japanese de design techniques. The card below, embossed, quite delicately, delicately designed, but what's on the horizon is smoke rising from destroyed Russian ships that the Japanese na Navy demolished in 1905 in, in the important battle of the Chinese Sea. Here's an example of a military subject that was treated artistically, but very carefully done at that. And you can see the, the, the water is shown using traditional Japanese technique of these superimposed arcs, this is here, rep representing the ocean. And this design technique dates to the pre-modern period. Numerous slides, also Meiji, certainly could be readily used e either by young adults or school kids, such, such as high school or college students. After the Japan Sea victory, a Japanese publisher issued a postcard showing in great detail the movement of the Russian and Japanese fleets at, at the time of the Japan Sea bat battle. This kind of educational card, relatively common and not terribly interesting, except for the historical content. Victory over the R R Russians was a tremendous event for the Japanese, and the celebration resulted in designs like these two cards. Again, on the left-hand side, typically Japanese provision 
or a written me message. On the right, there's a, a small box w where the sender has, has added a personal, personal note. Defeating the Russians was a big surprise for, for the world. And the Japanese at first were quite enthused, but their enthusiasm did not last very long. Part of the celebration involved what, what, what they called a, a lan lantern march or lan lantern pr procession with dozens, perhaps hundreds of la lanterns carried by marching Japanese near the Imperial Palace. The Imperial Palace is shown on the right-hand card, which is also very interesting in terms of design. The problem is when a peace treaty was ne negotiated, the Japanese failed to get any indem indemnity after raising taxes and borrowing as much as they could borrow in the London and New York markets. As a result, there were riots, uh, police boxes were burned, uh, the, the police were called out to sub subdue riot rioters, the prime minister lost his job. It was a, a victorious war, but created many problems. Year of the horse, a ma ma Meiji period feeling, again, at least in my opinion, pur purple being a giveaway for the Meiji period. Very interesting treatment of the flowers to create depth. Have, we have no idea what is represented by this woman playing the, the violin, but you can see from the serration on, on the right, this also was in a, a magazine and taken out of it for use. Good, good example of late Meiji or even early Taisho period design, quite neat, not overly done, flowing flowing lines such as we see in, in, in other cards as well. Simple, but pleasant enough in terms of design. Again, Meiji period. A visit to, to a, sh a shrine was a standard practice during New Year's. So this, this card showing pre priests in a relatively quiet or subdued atmosphere of a, of a shrine also is unmistakably a, a New Year's postcard. Card on the left was issued on the occasion of a high school sp sporting event of one kind or another. Card on the right for a large exhibition. On the on the left, you can you can see the li linear treatment of the background in the up, upper part of the card. Strictly a, a Japanese design technique. The, the card on on the on the right, I I would say, somewhat suggestive of. Art, art new late period art nouveau, quite different cards also from the Meiji period. I do not know what the woman in, in the upper postcard is holding. Maybe some kind of a toy. Interesting de design, but quite a, a mystery. I, I I think. Well, here's Emperor Meiji, rather stern looking fellow. Briefly to review why why would why was such a, such a, there's such a, a boom of interest in postcards at this very early time in their history in, in, in Japan. The victory over, over Russia was depicted in many publications with photographs and descriptions of, of, ba of battles. So the Japanese had a lot of information in real time. Postcards were used by the government and by private parties, including some who produced not just pinup pictures of beautiful women or geisha, but also erotic cards, which were sent to the troops. There was some opposition to, to that type of card. And some people felt that even the, the pretty woman postcards might be too much of a distraction to the soldiers and result in their lo loss of life. Artists were mobilized for the production of postcards. Some of those artists were quite well known. When the emperor died, died in 1912, it, it said that 
they, they even threw blankets over the rails of, of streetcars that were operated in front of the palace so, so that there would not be any noise generated when the streetcars were operated. Emperor Taisho, however, was weak um, mentally and physically. His reign did not last very long. Emperor Meiji smoked five cigars a day. His son couldn't do that. Meiji could tell his generals what to do. Taisho doesn't seem to have, have had that ability at all. There was a period when there were many strikes, riots by, by peasants, riots by consumers who were greatly dis discouraged and alienated by the government's ability to with regard to managing the country. The rice price rose to a high level, sp spread of interest in socialism and communi communism as part of a general movement towards liberal and stronger democratic con con conditions were also characteristics of, of the period. These are patterns used in Japanese design and art, I say design, particularly textile design. And they were picked up by artists working to, to produce illustrations for postcard use. So here's the Japanese shorthand method of depicting moving water. And one example of, of how art, artistic characteristics were transmitted from feudal times through the work of artists to postcard illustrations. And during Taisho's reign, Japan had been rec recognized in the West as a, a power to be recognized, while Japan itself tried to achieve closer ties with the major nations. The old guard oligarchs, however, who had done well in leading the country during the Meiji era, faded from, from view. And militarists who had been encouraged by the victory of the Japanese, not only over the Russians, but also in World War I, when Japan demolished the Russian Pacific Fleet and took over the German colony in Tsingtao. The period was considered to be one of what they called Taisho democracy, but actually there was very strong efforts at oppression of free freedoms, control of the press, and, for example, um, Margaret Sanger, an advocate of birth control, went to Japan. A at first, the government didn't want to permit her to, to leave her ship. So it was a, a time of great difficulty in, in terms of the conflict between desires of the individual Japanese and the government it it's itself. Taisho period, very fr free-flowing lines bold designs, almost abstract, made during the Taisho period, but I think it attractive enough to be used e even to today. Two cards by the same artist, nice nice use of color, good, comp good composition, Japanese feeling to the treatment of, of, of the sky in both of these cards. More than the ones we've seen before this from the Taisho period, this is representative, I believe, of the popular art and illustrations of, of, the, of the period, including post, postcards. Tr treatment of, of, of women, the way faces, faces are depicted, unthinkable in, in, as products of the Meiji period. So, so this is strictly Taisho period, that is 19, 1920s to up until maybe early 1930s would be the time these were were made. Art Deco from, from the period in, in, in included what I would con consider to be failures or almost laughable designs in, in some cases. This is the Defense Department's pavilion at the Manchurian Exhibition. And I think it's 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 one of the poorest or most disappointing Art Deco architecture designs that I've seen from from Japan. We have another Art Deco work in the next slide. 
the entrance to the aeronautics or aviation pavilion in one of the Japanese exhibitions. The Japanese had great success in exhibiting in London, in Paris, in Vienna, Philadelphia, Chicago, and many exhibitions in Japan, at which time there was invariably a number of temporary buildings that were made. So rather than criticize these designs, we have to think of them as being fun architecture, uh, re recreational architecture, rather than something uh, serious or of lasting historical importance. Here's another temporary building, rather Im imposing, has art deco design for an exhibition, not bad at all. Well, here's uh, Emperor Hirohito on the left. This is prob pr probably was his wedding. These, th these cars, I would say, are good examples of work done by art deco artists in, in Japan, a little bit complicated, but well, con well controlled. Of course, these are em emb embossed cards, also with, I think, very good, good use of, of color. So here's uh, Hirohito on the right as a young man, and on the left, I believe that's uh, his, his father, uh, Emperor Taisho. And I think here we have examples of Japanese art deco, that not, not quite well controlled or too eclectic. I, I don't know what you, what you might think of, of these particular two cards. This is a, a card for a high school sports meet. It may even have been de designed by a student. I wouldn't, wouldn't be sure, sure of that, though. It's got a, a free feeling that is quite unusual for any period of Japanese art be before the war. Two cards by the same, same artist, strictly Taisho period, thin, thin lines, same treatment of space as in other, other cards. I think simple enough and successful as postcards. On the right, you can see the same shorthand design technique for waves, but now it's kind of, a, what would you call it, airbrush, airbrush technique. Taisho period, tourism promotion cards. The, Text is words from a, a song from, from the region where the cards were issued. Same series, nice treatment of the couple on the, on the, on the right in terms of design. Right-hand cards with mount, mountains and, and clouds, similar to what we, we can see in other Japanese postcards. I think quite, quite well done for, for, for the period. Midsummer greetings card. Here are two examples of very well-designed card set issued for a mar marine or, ma or maritime inst institution, which is the reason for the treatment on the right of waves, on the, on the left, a mermaid with fish and, and sea seaweeds. In terms of design, I think this is quite exemplar exemplary. Probably a, a New Year's card. A rising sun, snow on the bows, another good design. And these, I think, are good examples of Art Deco design the later Taisho period when the, enough experience had been accumulated to make something that was new, con conveyed the Art, Art Deco feeling, and was done quite well. These, are, I think, are very good examples of the best Taisho card cards produced by the Japanese. Ordinary New Year's cards from, from the same period. New Year's, there's a familiar treatment of the sky, the ri rising sun. I suppose this is clo clovers. I don't know what co connection that has with New Year's, an an another Taisho period card. New Year's, simple, clean. Happy New Year. Two cards of a similar set with some variation in, in, the, in the middle. I would say nice work, Over, overdone Art Deco. I can't even be sure w w which side is up for either of these cards. And th they may have been issued as a set with two or more cards that would be com combined as if it was one illustration and not 
more. Treasure, treasure ship designs, neat work, could, could even be used, I think, today. Happy New Year on the right. Treat, treatment of the woman on, on the left or the gentleman who's greeting her at New Year's time certainly is art deco in, 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 in feeling. It's a New Year's card issued by a patent, patent medicine company, certainly with a rising sun down near the bottom. For a commercial card, I would say reasonably well done. Unmistakably, Art Deco in, in, in feeling is another New Year's card with caref carefully made characters saying Happy New Year. So here again, solitary figures, quite small in the overall comp composition, as if they were lonely people, almost a, a little bit of a sad feeling, but the, the kind of thing that was I have seen many times in cards from, from this period. Here again, solitary Japanese tourism promotion, quite well done, I would say, three cards of a, of a set. It was very strange. I had one card showing these women, uh, sorry, these men, shouldering a float in a festival of some kind or another. And then I found an, another card with the same concept, but from a completely different origin. I really wonder whether the designer of the card on the, on the left had seen the image on the right before making that the postcard. Some reasons why postcards were popular over such a long period of time. I think the most important points are in early years, use of postcards by the government itself, the popularity of exchanging New Year's cards, which has lasted over all of the, the years since the Meiji period, use of a, a post, postcard as a vehicle holding a, a lottery. So New Year's cards published by the government since 1949 had at, at, at the bottom of the address side lottery numbers and in March or, or so winners would be announced in the newspaper and Japanese would, would be able to collect money or prizes for, for participating in the lottery. Mount, Mount, Mount Fuji on the, on the left, Japanese traditional treatment of clouds on the right, let's see. A year of the dra year of the dra dragon, and as a re reminder of the background for the popularity of of postcards, you can see even as at present times, probably something like two billion cards a year are being sent by the Japanese. Two billion cards. So we have a large number of po of New Year's cards in absolute terms, and as a percentage of total postcards used by the Japanese. And that means that there's certainly a great number of postcards of some interest or value in terms of the design. Showa period, 1926 onward. During, the, during this time, the emperor was featured on postcards as frequently as Emperor Meiji was, but the driving force was the military. The government made extensive use of postcards to encourage and guide the activities, not only of the servicemen, but also people at the home front. So here, here we have a Japanese soldier, rising sun, and many cards were produced for, for, for children. Here's one, a Year of the Tiger. There's the Imperial Palace on, in the background on the right. To, to me, su suggests some influ influence of the Art Deco era. There's a fighter plane on the left, a, a bomber on the on the right. Not particularly good artwork, but again, meant for children. You might never guess what the young girl is putting into the collection box, which was provided by the maker of toothpaste. The toothpaste tubes were collected for recy re recycling as part of a government-led effort to, to collect the resources that were needed for maintenance of the empire and for the war effort. Here's a card exhorting the Japanese to conserve materials, specifically saying that if every household saves the equivalent of three matches a day, 
this is the kind of thing that we can make a ship, an engine, a rail car, or an airplane with intense pressure to conserve resources. Volunteer labor, perhaps also, also some forced labor, was used for efforts such as this one, the idea being that civilians would create landing strips by obtaining gravel from the lower left, wood resources from the upper left, other materials from the, the mountains on, on the right. 90 million Jap Japanese are, cooperate, are patriotically cooperating for the war effort. So, educational card on the right showing how vitamin A and vitamin D are made. Card on the, on the left compares dentist offices in America below where everyone has an appointment time. And the card on the top is the Japanese dentist office where it takes a half a day to get anything done. Resources problem. The upper card shows graphically the location of resources from Southeast Asia that the Japanese could use. The card below, resources from Pacific Islands. Very well done post postcard with a great deal of information related to agricultural products of Manchuria. Other cards, such as the ones showing ships, compared Japan to other countries. Invariably, the Japanese scale of ships or trade or airplanes or manpower always inferior relative to the US, England, Germany, and, and so on. Part in the lower right shows the front in, in the war in Europe and on the right in China. Neat, neat, neatly done. There are also da da dangers in the empire. This is a New Year's card from a, an entomological institution that shows, together with the, the New Year's greeting, the distribution of the two types of termites in, in Japan, red and the blue. And the colony of Taiwan already has been host to one type of termite, and Korea, which had been by this time annexed by the Japanese. Korea, however, is a question mark. I'm not sure what termites are, are there. During the, the Taisho period, but especially the early Showa period, there was a great increase in commercial use of postcards and use of postcards by in, institutions, industry, government, and, and so on. People in the home front, the women were encouraged to, to pray for the success of, of, of the military, engage in volunteer work, doing things like folding blankets and many other activities. We'll see a little bit of it. So here's one woman who's a member of, of the Greater Japan Women's Defense League, which at one time had a membership of more than 1 million women. She, she's wearing a Japanese apron, which is meant to sim symbolize active participation and contribu contribution to the war effort as expressed by the, the words, from the kitchen to the street. These women were or organized and held many activities such as shown in the next slide. So here's a branch meeting of, of, of these w women, each of which wear, wears a, a sash and, and that white white apron. Next, a few of them here posing with wigs. They're not wearing kimonos, they're wearing kind of a baggy pants that became more or less standard dress during the later years of the war. And here they are doing some kind of dance or perform, performing an exercise in, in a theater. Their activities included of particular importance to see off soldiers who are being who are departing for the front and serve them tea. That's on the right-hand card. The woman looks like she, as if she's wiping away a tear while the soldiers are having a, a sip of tea. Here they're seeing soldiers off at a railway station. And shown here with what was most important for postcards in particular, they would make and fill bags, which were called comfort bags, of items to be sent to men in the service. They were done, this work was done by organizations, that is in groups of people like, like these women, and other bags were filled at, at home by households and either collected by organizations or sent to servicemen directly by the makers. And if a household didn't have items to include in, in the bag, the card on the right is an 
advertisement for a sale at a department store of, of what the women could do, could use. So here's a card that sh showing how they're stuffing the bags with things like soap, cigarettes, uh, un underwear, a snack, maybe a doll, a, a letter from ch the children, a uh, drawing made by, by, by the kids, th th things like, like, like that. A well-known artist made the picture on the left showing two women making these comfort bags. On the right, there's somewhat boyish looking soldiers who have opened a bag and taking out something that looks like some snack or, or, or candy. And they seem to be very happy with that. The most important component of the care, the comfort bags probably were postcards. Invariably, the bags would have a number of postcards that would be sent to the men in service to write back to the family. And especially popular were cards for children to use to write to parents or older brothers who were in, in the service. And the cards then would be returned by military post to the civ civilians back, back home. And they would include cards such as the ones showing ch children in, in military uniform or cards showing in cartoon form so soldiers doing various things, a manner suggestive of a children's summer camp. Here's the kind of card that would, would be used for purposes such as that. Japanese sh shorthand symbol for waves is quite is, is visible. There's a ri rising sun. The, pic the photographs are of some kind of veterans in in uh, institution. Left hand picture is the surgery department, and and on the right hand side is the veterans lounge. Three military men b background with a sword and, uh, and and a bugle and a, and a bo embossed cards. Upper card showing. Not only the location of Japan, but Japanese controlled areas on the continent and South Pacific. Card below is a location in Japan where there had been war games. I expect the commander of the Red Army and the Blue Army that were engaged in those exercises. Art Deco influence for the depiction of military images with a relatively simple, simple de design, more military scenes. Upper, upper right, a relatively complicated de design, but it, it holds together as such, showing some artillery pieces, fa fa fancy artwork on the, on, the, on the left, two officers with many medals, other, other signs of Japanese design techniques. The lower, lower card with the rising sun shows the entrance, entrance to some sort of re regimental camp of the Imperial Army. This might represent much of what I've tried to compile, Japanese design sensitivity in depicting of the ocean waves, the woman with, I guess it's Laurel, who are awarding to a, vict a victor, rising, rising, rising sun, I, I suppose a, a dove of, of peace, and a, an embossed card that well combines the different ele elements Shown, shown here. So that's a, a, a quick tour of Japanese cards from the Meiji period onward. I think the, the most interesting observation that, that I, I'm, I would make is, is that the, the Japanese used an artistic approach for military postcards over a long period of time. And I don't know of any other country that did something like that. So it's something to think about. What, why? the Japanese do what they did. And thank you very much. Well, thank you, Aaron. Oh, my goodness. Uh, we're going to turn now to uh, Bill Burton, and he'll look over any questions or comments. Sean Levine uh, wrote a message that got truncated somewhere along the line, um, but he said, could you explain? Uh, and I'm not sure what uh, what the rest of it was, but Sean, can you, uh, can you say what it was that you were asking? Yes, sir. I, I was curious to find out. I've uh, been curious about this for a long time. It The Japanese flag is always shown as, uh, you know, a white uh, sphere coming on a white background. During the war, it had the uh, rays coming out of the, uh, coming out of the uh, 
read. I was curious to know what's the difference or what does the rays coming out of the uh, the flag, what's the difference between the two flags? I was wondering if somebody, if Aaron might be able to explain that to me. Well, the national flag is a solid round red ball. I had once been told that American pilots in, 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 world, in the Pacific in World War II when they spotted a Japanese plane in, in, in the air, what they would say over the radio was not Japanese, but they would say meatball, meatball. Right. I don't know whether that's true. Yeah, I've heard I, that. I, I, also, I also heard not many years ago that there was no official specifications for the Japanese flag. That, and yet one of the postcards that I have indicates specifications that may or may not have been official. Um, but they had different flags for different types of, uh, for, for, for different um, officers, different types of ships. And I think that ones that showed rays, one, one type of, of the flag, but not the official one. That it's 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 a, it's a good good question. I'll try to find out the answer and let you know through through the club. Uh, thank you. So many people would just uh, posted comments and said essentially, "Thank you." I didn't know very much about the subject, and and Aaron, your your explanation for some of the things that uh, I've always wondered about uh, uh, were terrific. But these are the two. Uh, comments that I've had that uh, have come along. So actually, uh, uh, Hal, it's back to you. Okay, very good. Anybody else have any comments? Susan, anybody? Um, maybe other collectors? I, I, of, I'd like uh, to thank Aaron. I'd sure. like to thank uh, Domo Erikato Gozaimasu. That sounds like a hidden meaning. <laughs> oh, no, it's just very honorific. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I collect the Japanese postcards in part because of Aaron and I know uh, Alan also collects I'm not sure who else is here that collects uh, these cards I, I'd like to recommend both listening again to some of the things that Aaron says in terms of the symbolism in, in helping you understand what the cards are all about invaluable information um, Anne Nishimura Morse also took Leonard Lauder's collection for the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, and she has done a wonderful book on Japanese postcards. Uh, I'm trying to think what other leads there are, and I had something else in mind, but I can't think of what it is now. But you're all welcome to come see my Japanese postcards. Um, one of the topics that I do collect is the, uh, the Zodiac. The story of the Zodiac, which I won't go into because that's Aaron's respons responsibility. And also the many cards that show Zodiac figures. I don't think I was aware how many New Year's cards there were without them. Uh, so that plays a part in what one collects and how one collects. Um, does anyone else have anything to offer that rounds out the subject? The cards are beautiful. And there are many cards in the United States right now being offered by different uh, clubs and groups. And uh, Aaron, I don't know what you have to offer right now in terms of uh, postcards that are for sale. Uh, Mary Martin has some in, that will come up on her uh, website of auctions. I know at many of the clubs, there are people that bring Japanese cards. So if you go to a club meeting or a club show and you're interested in starting, um, I know some of us can help you with that. Um, they're, they're absolutely beautiful cards. So look, look carefully while you're scouting around. Michael Langenstein, did you have Japanese cards? You have a bit of everything. Yeah, I do have a few Japanese cards. Well, I'll show you yours if you'll show me. Okay. Mine. Susan, I, I've posted a link in the chat to my Flickr album that shows I've got hundreds of scans um, that people are free to look at. And uh, 
enjoy. Yeah. Now, was your interest in Japanese cards through li uh, living on the West Coast and having uh, uh, our good friend? Who... It was meeting Yoji Khan. Yes, um, Yoji Khan. Oh, wow. My first postcard was from him. My first Japanese postcard was from Yoji Khan. Uh, unfortunately, he's no longer with us. But uh, again, when you he find He passed something... away in, yeah. in 2019. Um, and we, we bought his most of his stock. Um, oh, your dad didn't tell me that. However, you and I need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. May I make a comment here? I didn't include it in the cards that I showed, but some of the New Year's cards from Japan show elderly couple, one holding a rake with maybe only five or six teeth and the other holding a broom. And there's no suggestion from the picture itself what they were doing or who they were. So someone who is not familiar with Japanese culture would be at, at a loss to, to make some sense of it. But what they do show are, are two people from a Japanese myth of many hundreds of years ago, and man and woman are representative of a long, good marriage. The wo woman is, holds a, a broom to, sw to, to, to sweep out I guess not evil, but uh, to, to s s s s sweep out something undesirable. The man holds the rake in order to rake in or to, to good good fortune. And this myth of, of uh, an old old couple is the basis for a Japanese no drama, and is frequently used by by our artists and and illustrators. So it's a matter of knowing that the, the figures are based on a Japanese myth. And it, this is just one, one example of content which, which is strictly Japanese in our, our origin and re requires a little bit of research or experience to, to, uh, to understand. I have a question. Yes. Um, have you ever seen a postcard from the Imperial Hotel that is very ornate? with an orange background and green running through it. It um, has a photograph of the hotel in the center. No, uh, I have seen and I've published decorative postcards of the Imperial Hotel. I'm not sure whether those cards were of the Frank Lloyd Wright building or the predecessor of that building. I, I have quite a, quite a few cards from, from the uh, Imperial Hotel, uh, but I have not seen cards such as you described. I'm happy to send you a scan of it if you want. If you want to see it, yeah, it'd be it'd be interesting. I I put up for for sale um, fo photograph po real photo postcards of of the hotel because I didn't did, didn't feel they were essential to keep in the collection. It was a very nice very nice build building, but over the years. The, Owners didn't really take care, good care of it, and it was an, an uneconomical un use of, of the land. In nineteen uh, would have been nineteen sixty five or or or, or sixty six when the building was to be torn down. There was a movement to save the hotel. I participated in that movement and wrote quite a few articles in Japanese and English at that time wow. about the hotel. If any member of the club has questions re regarding Japanese cards that they, they have that are a puzzle or ha have some writing which is, is not un understood, I'd be very glad to help help by explaining. And you know I'll show yeah. up at your door for that, so. Yeah. You know, one thing that Aaron, we have practiced and worked with Aaron for several days, Alan and I have. But one thing that I thought was particularly neat is that a lot of the cards, if not most of them, were for the Japanese consumer, not the person in America or the person in Great Britain, you know, where they were sent as a, uh, a tourist item or a wish you were here. But it was a propaganda. It was a learning tool 
it was a educational card like some of the maps and the graphs and so forth, uh, which I thought was uh, terribly interesting. So we were seeing material that wouldn't normally show up uh, in our neck of the woods. Is Hal, that right? Hal, do we have a few minutes? For, for, sure, go ahead. Let, let me share with you my experience in finding two Japanese cards that are really un unusual. And I wish I could, had been able to bring them to the meeting today. One card from about 1903 shows the trunk of a tree where someone had scraped off the, the, the bark of an area of maybe six inches by 20 inches. And with a brush and ink, wrote something on the, on, on the tree. This was a, state, a statement written by a, a Japanese student questioning what is the meaning of life? It was a philosophical question written by a Japanese college student who then committed suicide by jumping from the top of a waterfall. It cre created a sens sensation and a, photo, a, a Japanese publisher issued a postcards showing the tree and showing a photo of the student as an insert in, in the picture. The government banned the postcard. And as a result, all the company was able to do is sell the postcard without any writing on the, so the, the so here's, here's a, a, a non-postcard, I guess. But the only, the only case I, I know of a, a postcard having been banned by the government because it, it, it's concerned that it, it would incite other people to commit suicide. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, the other card I have to explain that in, in pre-modern times and before the war, there was some Japanese who would tell, tell st stories to children who would be gathered in the town or the village and the gentleman would have a box that would serve as the, the frame for pictures used to tell a, a story. You can imagine something like a, a stage for someone putting on a, a Punch and Judy show in the park. And so there's a, a kind of box with, with an opening where pictures to show a story could be shown. And the person would tell a story and change the picture, tell us more of the story, change the picture and spend a few minutes telling the story and showing pictures and collecting from the kids a couple of the equivalent of a couple of pennies. So an itinerant storyteller with storyboards in a box that served as a frame. One card that was privately made with more than one sheet of, of paper and the top sheet would, would open up like a little window. And in that window, you could show some dr drawings on a piece of paper that would slide inside the, the card to show one scene and another in this op op window opening of the postcard. But what it shows are pictures of Hitler and Mussolini. It's a little bit, little bit difficult to verbally explain what the card was like, but if I send a video of it to the club, maybe there'll be a, a chance to, to share it. Sounds very interesting. My gosh. Amazing. It's the only Japanese card I, I, I've, I've seen that had a depiction of Hitler and Mussolini. Mm. And it was meant to tell a story to children. Wow. Well, thank you very much for the chance to meet some postcard fans. And again, if anyone has questions about Japan, let me know. You, you, you may even find that the cards that you thought were Japanese were really Chinese. Because <laughs> quite, 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 quite a few dealers mis mistake one for the other. Well, thank you, Aaron, for being here today and for giving us your time. It's been a pleasure. See you again. Take care now. Okay. Thank you all. Thanks, Thank everyone. You for coming.